In this video, I'm gonna talk through eight opportunities to use ChatGPT in your SaaS. And if you stick around till the end, I'm gonna talk through my thought process of when and when not to use new tech like this in your application, and also how to think about opportunities to do so. I'm Rob Walling, a serial entrepreneur with multiple exits. I've invested in more than 120 startups, and I've written three books about entrepreneurship. So ChatGPT is all the rage. If you're on tech Twitter, you may already be tired of it, but ChatGPT is a chat interface over the OpenAI project. It's pretty amazing technology and it really shocked even folks in the technorati that this advancement came so quickly. And I wanna put a couple caveats to this upfront. There's not actually a way to interact directly with the chat GPT via an API. You can interact with the AI model behind chat GPT. One thing that I haven't taken into account with the, the ideas in this video is that OpenAI charges based on tokens, based on the speed of the response. And so some of these may not be viable just based on the cost to do them. And lastly, even though many of us are kind of tired of hearing about chat GPT and OpenAI already, most of the rest of the world has not heard about it. And so if you have a customer base that is not constantly on Twitter, monitoring the tech blogs and so on, they're likely to be blown away if you are able to integrate this into your application. So for the first opportunity, I bet you think I'm gonna suggest an SEO tool to create content for your blog or to rank for certain terms. I think that's already a commodity. Tools like that have existed now for a few years. And in my opinion, the verdict is very much still out on whether that's gonna work in the long term. Even if you can get some short-term gains, I think there are gonna be some headwinds to that as those things become commoditized. So my first opportunity is not an SEO tool to generate content for your website. It's to think about how to build a tool for your existing customers to help them help themselves. If you already have a SaaS application, anywhere your customer has to write something, AI can create multiple suggestions to choose from and or edit. So for example, if I ran veed.io, could you think about creating an AI video script writer to create the script in advance from the content that OpenAI is pulling from? If I still ran Drip, which was an email service provider, we could easily skim an email and they have the AI suggest multiple different subject lines. And in fact, there's an existing tool out there that does it. I've invested in them through TinySeed. It's Automata at buyautomata.io. They will take YouTube videos or other types of video content and blog posts, and they will slurp in the transcript and the text and use AI to create a LinkedIn post around that, a Twitter thread, email marketing content, so subject lines and ideas like that. And so this type of tool already exists. And if you need it as a standalone, obviously check out Automata, but in your app, it's Itself, think about anywhere that your customer has to write something. You can take a large piece of content, whether that's audio, video, or a blog post, and you can turn that into a summary or another type of social media content. Internally, it makes your customers more powerful, right? It levels them up and makes their job easier, and thus they like your software more. And then you could even take this little tool, this summarizer that writes a video script or that writes subject lines, and you could make it a free tool and do engineering as marketing. If you get inbound SEO links for this, you could make this a separate tool that you could launch and get free traffic that you then try to monetize. Opportunity number two is using AI to draft cold emails and outbound LinkedIn outreach. A lot of startups, especially SaaS companies, are sending cold email and cold LinkedIn outreach to find new customers. Could you feed an AI model with your email enrichment info, everything you know about a person, and have it crank out a personalized draft email based on a template? for every individual on your email list. And today, cold email and LinkedIn outreach is basically generated by a template and human personalized, if at all. And so to have AI be able to, you know, take a first crack at it, and it could save you a lot of time with your cold outreach efforts. And if you're already, let's say you run a cold outreach SaaS or a cold outreach productized service, I think this could be a really interesting internal way to save yourself and your team a lot of time. The next six opportunities are standalone ideas for SaaS apps. None have been validated. I did try to start with problems though and not just do a brainstorm of what AI can do. Whether it's problems I've personally encountered or that I've seen teams or saw the product team have this issue, developers, support. I started from there and came up with several standalone SaaS ideas. The third opportunity is a custom knowledge base as a service. And this is where a company could hire you to 
slurp in everything from an internal corpus and then be able to ask questions about it. And so specifically, the use case I started with, honestly, is I would love to feed in all my essays from robwalling.com, all my podcast transcripts, YouTube video transcripts, all of my books, all the thinking, even my conference talks, and put all of that into a corpus so I could literally ask it to outline a YouTube video as me, or what's my thinking on reducing churn, or to even outline a conference talk or a podcast. And my use case is very likely a limited one, but you know that there are companies that need internal knowledge bases to answer questions about their products or about stuff that's going on in other departments. There's so much knowledge in a company that is hidden and unable to be accessed. And I think there's really interesting use case for this one. The next opportunity is to create a support tool for let's say any company that has live chat, phone support, or email support. Usually they have an external knowledge base and an internal knowledge base. It could consume one or both of those and it could chat with customers in a way that's way better than the automated chat we have today. It could create drafts of response emails, and you could even use it as an internal support resource. Like at my last company, it was a SaaS company called Drip. When we had 100, 110 people, I had a lot of customer success people and sales people that were coming to me because I ran product, and they would have questions about the product. All those questions could have been answered by having a tool like this, an internal knowledge base that just is the brain of the company and knows everything about everything. It knows all the knowledge that's in a lot of people's heads, but it puts it all in one place and gives it this easy interface, this chat interface to be able to talk to it. Keep in mind that if you were to create a support tool that let's say is an external tool that does chat and, and email, the existing support tools on the market today are absolutely doing this. Zendesk, Help Scout, Intercom, you know that they're thinking about this and working on it. Opportunity number five is a quick one and it's to take transcripts and turn them into readable prose, almost like a ghostwriter would do. So I run into this issue all the time where I need to write a chapter of a book. I know that I've recorded a podcast or a YouTube video on it, but the transcripts of those are spoken English that doesn't translate well into prose. And so I either need to go in myself and take the ideas and reframe them into what you would expect to be in a book or an essay, or I need to hire someone to go do that. And there is no doubt in my mind that AI could learn my writing style and it could take a transcript from anything that is spoken word and turn it into written English because spoken and written have two different feels to them. I for one feel like I would use this quite a bit. Opportunity number six is to build a tool that writes domain specific code. So today you can go to chat GPT and say, write me a JavaScript calculator that does X, Y, Z, but it doesn't know your internal model. You know, if you have project management software, then you have projects and users and tasks and reminders and whatever else. And chat GPT doesn't know about them because they are specific to your business and to your code. So how difficult is it to train it to understand your domain model and the objects in your code so that it can start writing domain specific code that you then proofread and write tests for. Ooh, could it even write tests? Yeah, there, there's a lot here. And then how difficult is it to do that for your company or as a service for every software company out there? And do I think that AI is going to take over writing code and we don't need developers? I do not. I think it's going to make us more productive and hopefully allow us to write better code and build less buggy software. Opportunity number seven is one where I started with a problem that product teams have, and it's the ability to absorb a ton of feedback and feature requests and make decisions based on that. Some folks use a tool like Savio, for example, to gather feedback and then make decisions. But when you're trying to absorb support emails, feature voting boards, forums, Slack channels, Facebook groups, all that incoming data, some people make a gut call. That's the way I used to do it. Some people use Excel spreadsheets and other people use the tools that I mentioned. And you're trying to answer questions like, what are our best customers asking for? Which features should we build next? How much of an impact will these have? Does AI have the ability to absorb all of those incoming requests and not just prioritize them on what's being requested the most, but to try to make an intelligent decision and inform your, your decision of what should we build next in order to have the maximum impact on our existing customers and the growth of our company. And the eighth opportunity is for sales teams. And with this, I started with the problem of how do sales teams get better? How do they make better demos? How do they train new salespeople? And so for this one, I imagine pulling in all the transcripts from all sales calls across your salespeople, and then being able to ask questions like, how can we improve our demos? Why are we losing deals? What are the best sales approaches? And what are our best salespeople doing that the rest aren't? You know, imagine again, if you have this super intelligent computer brain that can look across all of these words and interpret them in a way that human beings can. If you think about it, probably any department, 
in most companies has a need to take a big corpus of data and turn that into something that it can just ask questions about. In a minute, I'm gonna tell you about my thought process for how and when to introduce new tech like this into your application. But before I do that, if you like this video, you should check out the sister podcast, Startups for the Rest of Us. You can find it wherever greater podcasts are served or head to startupsfortherestofus.com. It's a podcast I've done for 12 years. We have 630 something episodes and every week it's about 30 minutes on topics just like this, building, launching, and growing SaaS companies. So when thinking about how to use new tech like this and integrate it into your app, I think the first thing to think about is everyone's gonna be talking about it for now, so don't make any rash moves, right? Don't change your roadmap based on something like this yet, unless you think that there's a massive opportunity. But I think for most companies, this is gonna be a nice to have and not a game changing feature. And the framework that I've been using for thinking about this is something I've already said throughout this video, which is if there's a corpus of text, including audio or video transcripts, the AI can absorb it and then answer Answer questions about it, it can write copy, it can summarize it, it can repurpose it in a way that appears that a human has done a bunch of things, but in fact, the computer has done them just a lot more efficiently. I think the trap to avoid is that this is changing so quickly that I do think a lot of things are going to be open sourced and become commodities. And so if you spend a couple months developing your email line subject writer, I'm guessing that there will be one of those coming out. It's a pretty obvious idea, right? And a lot of the obvious ideas are gonna get built and released for free. And that's the danger here is that things are changing so quickly and you don't wanna give months of engineering time when something is gonna be open sourced or be available for free later. So that's why in this video, I liked to stick to things that are really hard problems and even domain specific problems because usually those problems are focused focused on later. Usually the obvious ones, the fun ones to build, get built, they get open sourced, maybe they're free, but it's not gonna be a competitive advantage over the long term. But if you can spend a week or two and integrate with OpenAI and crank out an internal tool to suggest email subject lines and then turn that into a free tool, to me it feels like an interesting, perhaps a worthwhile experiment. Well, I hope you enjoyed it as I walk through those eight opportunities to use chat GPT in your SaaS. I hope that got you thinking. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and of course subscribe to the channel every week. We ship a video like this on topics ranging from building, launching, and growing your startup.